How's that? Happy Canada Day, Adam. Well, yeah, it, it, exactly. I, I even had, I guess we're not video in this anymore. I got my, my Canada shirt on here and everything, so I'm pretty excited. Oh, you could use your webcam. There's a webcam option if you'd like. That'd well, I'll try cool. to start it. I don't think we need to see me anymore. It says you cannot start your video because your host has stopped it. But that's all right. Oh, okay. Or it must be in the site. I, I can, huh? <laughs> it must be in somewhere in the settings. But that's all right. Yeah, everybody. Uh, we can look at we can look at the Canadian dollar. We can. Uh, yeah, what I'd like to do is, you know, uh, I really love your seasonals, and here it is, July first. But you know, maybe you could give me a history lesson first, Adam. What does Canada Day celebrate? Canada's independence. It's, it's Canada's independence. 152 years today, 1867, uh, from from the UK, and it was a pretty uh, peaceful. It was uh, just one of those British ones where they they walked away, I guess. Okay, well, yeah, instead of what uh, America went through. Interesting that they both happen in July, though, don't you think? Yeah, I, uh, I guess you, I, I you can't know, get I guess they feel generous, you know? It, it's a time to separate. <laughs> so maybe uh, Brexit will happen in July. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Anyway, so uh, seasonally, what do you have shaping up for July, buddy? Well, it is, a, it is a big month for Canadian dollar, um, all okay. the quantity currencies. I did a recap on our site on, uh, of the June seasonals. I don't know if we talked about that, but it was, again, it was, that was a U.S. dollar weakness month, and, and the dollar ended up being the weakest currency, especially dollar Swiss was one that, that we highlighted, and that ended up being a good one. The Canadian dollar was the top performer last month, and the seasonals for Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar, it's the second strongest month over the last 10 years uh, seasonally, so... I mean, they've got a bit of momentum. I mean, you know, the fundamental picture doesn't exactly scream to buy any of those if the Fed hits the brakes here, but, but okay. um, it's a good Interesting for, segue. <clears throat> All yeah. right, so uh, Fed. There are more uh, seasonals. I, I please stay on the seasonals for a sec if, if you want oh, to wrap sure. it up. Well, but uh, it, for dollar yen, it's the, it's the weakest month on the calendar. Um, so again, that is like, it's a tough one to swear with what, what, what's happening right now. Um, and generally the U S dollar, it's a soft month, second softest month on the calendar. If you go for the Dixie or the Bloomberg dollar index. So a lot of reasons, one big reason anyway, not to like the dollar and it's the best month for the S and P 500, uh, July and also the UK FTSE uh, 100. So. Some good news for stocks there, but again, Ned, if you want to get into the Fed here, that's kind of what's I on do, my mind. I do because you brought it up, and I, you know, I'm fascinated. <laughs> not only because you brought it up, so you know, uh, Paul did mention that part of the uncertainty that could create uh, them to move in lower rates was trade uncertainty. So right now, the S and P's uh, are you know celebrating a truce. And is it possible that Powell also interprets this truce as not a reason for them to ease? The market is looking at, um, for sure, I mean, uh, almost like it's a layup lock that they're going to lower rates. You think there's a possibility people are wrong-footed on this, Adam? Yeah, well, I mean, it's nuts to me right now. I mean, I just pulled up the probabilities on the screen there, and if you, it's a little hard to read, but. I, we pull- can see him. 20%, uh, 50 basis points is still, still in the market. I yeah. mean, that's, that's nuts to me, given that, that we just had this truce. Um, you know, a cut, I think, is coming. You can't, they can't back away from it but, now. But, but you're going to do it at all-time highs in the S&Ps? Well, Why yes. is your ammo here? I, I think it's because they've committed to it at, at this point. But, I, you know, I think it's, we focus probably a bit too much on that, that one move. And what really matters is over the next year, we have four cuts priced in. And it might just be one. This might be one and done. Um, They they might start to reframe it, I think, as an insurance cut. And we heard that from Bullard last week. And I think that's the risk. I think we have Williams tomorrow and um, Mester. And we start to hear this insurance cut talk. Well, that's, you know, you still have the optionality later. But if you're pricing in four cuts or three before year end, the market starts to have second thoughts about that. And then right the dollar point. can higher. At the same yeah. time, we've got data. I mean, data hasn't been great today in 50 minutes. It's the ISM manufacturing number. And, and I'm expecting something pretty poor on that. Okay. So uh, does that take you uh, to 
Uh, do you think we put in a major top in the dollar, Adam, and we're on the verge of breaking down? Is that your bias, or do you think the bull market in the dollar, as long as we hold some levels, say 95 in Dixie, there's still a chance for a new high in the dollar this summer or fall? Yeah, I, I think... You know, I think we have probably hit the high, but I think it's going to be a long term, not a short term. Um, you know, the dollar, the U.S. economy might be slowing down. I think there are some signs that it, it's that it's that it's softening a little bit. I mean, dollar is a very crowded trade, but I don't think it's going to be that kind of V-shaped top. I think right now we'll probably see uh, some dollar distribution strength over the next month. You know, the, or the month or two months um, as we get some mixed data. Maybe the Fed backs away from some so aggressive stocks come off um and and yeah it just fits in fills it out here a little bit at the top and then we turn towards q4 of next year is probably the time when the dollar goes uh just given i mean it, it can all blow up on one trump tweet but i think there is going to be some negotiation however the one spot i think people aren't watching is europe and i believe the plan all along was for trump to make a deal with china and then pivot to europe and I think even in this coming week, we might see Trump kind of shelve China for a little bit and turn and try to get a quick win with Europe on trade or try to squeeze Europe. And that, again, can really undo all the good news uh, on a lot of fronts. Uh, you mean starting with autos again? Autos, exactly. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Bring the hammer down on autos. or, or I mean, they can, Trump talks about agriculture as well. Uh, yes. Well, with, yeah, yeah, there are a lot. Yeah, a lot of the grain people in in this country are under pressure. Uh, let me ask you about this uh, spectacular move we had in the gold market, Adam. And you know, it's, Let's pull it up. it's uh, huh? Yeah, pull up the chart here. Okay, Great. so we had uh, you know uh, what people are calling like a six year breakout of a range. Uh, you could depends where you draw it. 1365, 1375, uh, but you have a lot of people talking much higher numbers. Uh, maybe with if your seasonals are right about the yen weakening, um, we could get a continuation move and buy breaks here around 1380 or so, looking for higher numbers. Yeah, I mean, I think that's to me. You know, if you like the technicals, it's a huge consolidation. It's a breakout. Maybe you get that retest at 1350, 1375. We did get 1381 today. So if you're really bullish, maybe you take that as a sign. I'm going to wait and see what the Fed says. I like it. I like it a lot. I like the, the gold trade. Um, you know, the last easing cycle globally ended in $1,900 gold. Okay, 2011. Um, yeah, just a shade that that was kind of the peak of the last easing cycle, right? Right. And um, you know, if we're in another global easing cycle, we're going back there. As as far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is to me in the big picture. I think what you've seen now is Fed rates aren't going to get above two and a half percent like ever. You know, this is we're we're cutting at all time highs in the stock market. Demographics aren't getting any better um, in the United States. And, and inflation, you know, isn't materializing. So if you cut now, you're, you know, at best you get back to these levels in 10 years. So gold just looks better and better in a zero yield world. Seasonally though, um, there's a little bit of strength in July just over the last bit. And August though is a much better month. So, so maybe it sets up that way, uh, but you know, you still have a, a bit of a positive backdrop here for gold. Although in June was, an amazing month for gold and seasonally not particularly so, notable. So let's uh, swing over to poor man's gold. Silver way out underperformed. The gold on the upside didn't even take out the high of the move from a month ago on this recent rally in gold. I've noticed though the last couple of days with gold selling off, silver acting better. Uh, do you track the gold silver ratio? It's trading above 90. And any view uh, on whether silver may begin to uh, hold up better? And I've been saying to people, uh, why not exchange some of your physical gold with the uh, gold-silver ratio at 90 for some silver? Not all at once or, or do that because I think it's possible we look back at these 90s in gold-silver ratio and 
go, why weren't we doing that? Because, you know, the mean is 40 or 50. Yeah. What do you think? I, I mean, I, I see, it looks like it's basing out here. And I think if gold gets, gets that, that real enthusiasm, I think in order to get a big move in silver, you have to have that old time enthusiasm back for gold. Like we saw, you know, eight or 10 years ago. Okay. Um, when gold was on the tip of everyone's tongue. Um, I, you know, I talked to the gold guys, you know, we're obviously not there yet. You see the miners, you see, maybe you start to see miners consolidate, you start to see gold run up over 1500. I think that's when silver gets into it. For me, I, I'm more of a keep it simple guy. If, if you like metals, go with gold and, and don't overcomplicate it. Cause I think that that's a bit of the danger for a lot of traders for me is you, okay, I like gold, but silver is a bit cheaper and, and wait into that. I, I get, I get what you're saying. And it, Mm -hmm. you certainly realize it looks like it i get what you're saying and i recommend people <laughs> listen to what you're saying because it's tough enough isn't it adam to just be right about a complex instead of you don't have to be right about everything within yeah. the complex and it's find, you know, how, the how leader many, and find the leader and stick with it how many times have, have i done that or have you done that or any trader i know has i need a calculator a a great idea and then overcomplicated it and screwed it up somehow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's the simple ideas, the simple themes. We're in a global easing cycle, buy gold. And uh, yeah, silver will benefit too. You know, bonds obviously benefiting. They're way out ahead of it. Um, but now is probably the time to wait and see. I mean, Powell speaks on the 12th and, or the 10th uh, of this month. And that's, that's probably the time I'm going to watch. And if he stays as dovish as he's been, then this pile right back into gold um but until then let's see what happens at 1350 because we might get back down there okay oil uh, not as uh straightforward is it uh you know you have extremes on both sides uh iran percolating any problem in the strait of hormuz you know who knows and a lot of bears because of the narrative of weaker global growth and things that you pointed to think we can actually take out the january low in crude, uh, where do you come down here? Uh, do you think it's ripe for at least a pullback with uh, the bullish OPEC news today? It, it, I mean, the OPEC news is good if they extend it to what nine months, and uh, and you know Iran stays on board, Russia's on board. It, there's this big confusion about U.S. production supply, right? There's, these inventory numbers have been so huge, and they're finally starting to turn, and you know, if you get some dollar weakness, a little bit better global growth, then, then I do still like the upside up into the 70s. But, okay. you know, I, I look at this chart on the weekly I have up here. Yeah. Um, monthly chart. Um, weekly. And it, you see this consolidation starting to happen, right? Around the 57, right around these levels. Yeah. And, Big and I think the market is, you're trying to find out, okay, we, we get a bit of a better idea here on supply, but the demand side it's really up in the air. Uh, you know, the numbers haven't been great on the economy. If that's slowing, you know, even if the Fed cuts, but if it just ends up being a couple Fed cuts and the rest of the economy does well, you know, oil can can pop and, and bust out into the 80s. And, yeah. and for me right now, all right, let's just wait and see a little bit on oil. I am at my core a little bit more bullish on oil, but, but uh you know, now's not the time, especially after the pop in the last three, four days. Yeah, the bears would say this is a, just a retrace move from the high of 66.50 to the low of 50. And the bulls would say that low at 50 is uh, just uh, the beginning of a three or a C to the upside to take out the highs. So, yeah, it's a right in the middle, neutral, maybe volatility spreads here. <laughs> so uh, I also want to move over to... Uh, what's been happening in uh, U.S. dollar yen? You talk about uh, the seasonals on it, uh, a technical picture on it with uh, what it's done in, say, the last week or so to recover here. This a rally to sell based upon your seasonals and what levels look like. Well, that's, might I mean, be yeah, you're, you're talking about seasonals. It, like I said earlier, it's the weakest month on the calendar for dollar yen. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this chart is weak. I mean, it's bad. You have just a series of lower lows um, all over the last month. Bounced here, but not off great support. Um, you know, that, that flash crash low looms, wherever you want to okay. peg it at. I was going to bring that up. You think we, we might go for that? 
you know, you see all these Yen crosses are flashing the same kind of sign. You know, the one really interesting one I'm watching today is uh, is Kiwi Yen because it, it looks like you popped a little bit above above this kind of recent high here, but now it's kind of hanging here and it's not looking too strong today. You know, stocks open in 10 minutes. Maybe we get this sell the fat kind of move. And then I think something like Kiwi Yen looks really bad because you have that old low again, you know, you're, you're even closer to that there. You really have to go down and touch this. So, you know, I, I, I'm having a hard time right now squaring this, you know, this fundamental improvement on trade probable probable less dovishness from the fed or, or shift to something more neutral from the fed with with a lot of these charts and i'm just not the kind of guy that will fight a chart so okay you know, my, so I, I, do I, nothing or look for rallies to sell yeah you know wait for a little bit of clarity on on some i mean ultimately it could be that, that the fed just stays dovish and and uh and then you sell dollar yen and it's fair as straightforward as the chart looks because that certainly looks like a bit of a dead cat balance to me but if you get up over 108.80 i mean you're here at 10830 right there's yeah. a bit of resistance to 108.80 190 10920 yeah. in there if you sell it here 50 pip stop i mean it's a, that's a good trade uh for me um, okay. I just like to, you know, it's, I think this ISM number is, is going to be big. If this is poor, you know, you're in recessionary territory on manufacturing. I know it's not a huge part of the economy, but it's forward looking. Uh, it, it's pretty worrisome if that's, uh, that's below 50. I think the market's right around 50. The expectation is 51, but I think the market was spooked by uh, Chicago PMI was really weak on Friday. So. I know that crypto hasn't been around that long. Probably there aren't seasonals. Oh, well, I've got the seasonals on crypto. Oh, okay, They're okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Just Bitcoin. You're the best. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you know, we, we had this tremendous rally, and I actually saw the higher low in February and wrote it for a while, but this rally exceeded my expectations. Uh, I guess the question is, is this a bear market rally from last year's high of 18 grand on Bitcoin, or is this a resumption of a bull market, bro? Yeah, I mean, it did top out just above that 61.8% retracement of the all-time high to the December move. So you, know, you have a good argument there for saying, all right, this is just a retracement. You know, we we're kind of down back here again after the weekend. I've got the chart here. Let me just pull it over. Um, in the meantime, there's the seasonals. I, I mean, it's. I think it's nuts to trade that on seasonals, but... But uh, I have it, and there it is. Um, I don't know if I need to zoom that in a little bit. Is August a negative month? I, I, not, just, I think August, I mean, I just kind of, I don't even have those averages there, but I just eyeballing July, it's been pretty good. <laughs> even last, okay. last year, it was up 30% in July. Um, but the, June, reason I, the reason I bring up August, and you may want to uh, pay attention to it, I interviewed a crypto guy, and he said that August is ghost month for the Asians. And they're, you know, a lot of the money flow into crypto and that they pull their horns in a little bit during August. So uh, just curious if you had anything for August. Well, yeah, well, that is August there. I mean, it shows last year was a little soft, but 2017, right? And the, the, that was when the mania really clicked in the, the peak of the Bitcoin market. It was kind of soft through the summer and then it was around mid late august that it really went bananas and that's when that parabolic move started up you know through that year end if you look at that august yeah. 2017 uh 64 and then a little dip in september and then three mm -hmm. insane months to to get to that all-time high but i guess if you exclude that you see you know 16 15 14 there is a bit of weakness there and you know i i, hard, I find it hard to draw any kind of conclusions on that there's the yeah. chart of uh sorry for the poor charts gang it's gonna, they're gonna not have a poor. Big, right but that's uh you see that 61.8 percent retracement yeah. you know got above that for a few hours and two different days last week but that is kind of, and that's the whole move right from from yeah. high to low like i, I like the kind of look of that um sorry it cuts off on the edge there but that's that's kind of the way i'm thinking about bitcoin right now but it's it's amazing. I mean, it's just unbelievable what's happened in Bitcoin in the last two weeks. Yeah, maybe um, the ap the atmosphere has changed. People are looking at it, uh, taking it more seriously. Maybe a lot of crypto people uh, say we're entering the mass adoption 
curve. Well, that, it's, it's interesting to me because if you look at the trading flows, it's all been kind of money from Tether, right? So I saw these flows kind of last week and, and you see it was like a four, $5 billion inflow into Bitcoin and four of it came from Tether. So that tells me that it's crypto people kind of getting back into Bitcoin, right? Okay. But if you were to have that public start to come back in and new money come in, that's what you need. Um, and you need to kind of, I like the, the, the people who watch like Bit, uh, Bitcoin searches on Google. Um, you know, you start to hear that buzz. If you still start to hear the talk on the street again about Bitcoin and then, you know, then I think um, it gets back to those all time highs, but I don't quite sense that yet. I don't know. What's your okay. sense now? Uh, I, you know, I don't do as much. Uh, I, I don't know where that street is unless it's Internet <laughs> Avenue. Oh, yeah. hear what's happening on the street, but uh, right now it's an ID, IDK for me. Uh, I love to buy a, tra a retracement of this move. I can't chase it. And, you know, I want to wrap it with S&Ps making new record highs today on the truce. Uh, you have any seasonals there and, and your view, a continuation of this bull market, or do you see any trouble ahead? Boy, it's it's tough to hate this chart right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm scared of the Fed. I should, you probably can't fight an all-time high. Uh, and that's, what are we, four minutes from the open here. I don't have the futures up, but there's this, there's this spot yeah. that kind of looks like a big inverted head and shoulders in the last you know year or so. And if so, I mean, you're going to 3,600? 30, what, what do yeah. I have the right? Yeah. yeah it's, either uh, that, or, that or a megaphone. Yeah, yeah. Some, I mean, you get this kind of topping and a little yeah, bit of a broadening. Out here. Broadening formations are the toughest to trade. I've read in all the textbooks. And back, but I, I, I can't. I mean, what if the Fed just keeps cutting? They just keep. They just say, "All right, it's all about inflation." You know what? Growth is good, but we don't see inflation, and we're worried about lower inflation expectations. I mean, that's a reasonable bet, and that's how you get to thirty six hundred. And you know, the chart looks set up for it. Um, okay. And I, 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 yeah. Tough to China. get, tough to get long and tough to get short. Another. I mean, one. that's how it like always is, long. right? It's, is, 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 well, is, I don't know. Is, there are some times where it's easier well, uh, yeah. to get short. You know, at, with failing rallies or a pullback, putting in a higher low. I mean, you have reference points, but you're right. At new all-time highs and lows, uh, very difficult trade to take there yeah. i mean the problem and the one thing that people have been saying for the last month is you know, this is a hated rally right people have been yeah. saying that it, 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 people hate it money has been flowing out rather than flowing in um of funds uh you know the public's very skeptical i'm very skeptical um you know there's nobody banging the table saying buy the s p 500 that's when it usually rallies um okay. so you know, there's no, if bonds stay where they are, you can't buy bonds. So, you know, it all sets up pretty well for stocks and, and it, it really hangs on the Fed here now. But what do we know about the Fed? They've been dovish, they probably stay dovish. Um, you know, they, they, they're probably not going to pivot back to being. Well, yeah, Paul, Paul doesn't want to be demoted by not being well, dovish, right? He's, yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, although he says he will serve out his term. <laughs> uh, as chairman. So anyway, that's, uh, you know, sometimes, Adam, you know what? I feel like Rod Serling could not have written the script that we're living through today. It's, I mean, if you want to be dollar, it, it's a not, it is a crazy world, but you can set it up pretty well for dollar weakness and, yeah. uh, you know, stock market strength, gold strength. I mean, the charts are all saying the same thing. You know, the Fed has rolled over here. So I think you yeah. probably just want to bet on that and, and go with the seasonals. And The dollar is the most convenient sacrificial lamb, don't you think, for keeping the party going? It, it is. Um, you know, there's not a lot of downside in it. There really isn't the inflation um, that the Fed was worried about. And, you know, say they run it at 2.5% on inflation instead of 1.5%. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. I think the, the economy can handle it. The market can handle it. And uh, Trump certainly help him, you know, keep keep the peace at the Fed and keep him happy. Uh, yeah. And you know what else? After talking to you, Adam, every time I do, uh, you make it easy for us to easier for us to handle uh, a difficult task in you know uncertain times, trying to 
pull a piece of the market out here and there in many instruments. And so, again, Adam, I, I'm very appreciative of you coming in and edifying our community. Uh, if you want to show uh, your great website and, you know, what people could do to get involved with you guys over at Forex Live, this would be a good time. Yeah, right. There it is. Uh, yeah, well, here, I got it up on the screen. It's Forex Look at that Live. content. It's dot, everywhere. Dot com. It's, it's, you know, a live site. Thing. If you want to see, if you don't know Forex Live, if you see a move in the market, you want to know why the market moved, go to Forex Live. Um, it's just live analysis of, of every tick, more or less, every, every headline. Um, you know, I, well, we've got all the news services in the world, but most people don't. There's no cost to it. Um, it's just advertising. And uh, your, yeah, model. your model good is content like done. this. You know, I've got the, rich, or the uh, ISM number. Those are all the regional numbers, just breaking them down. You can see how poor they are ahead of ISM. We'll have live analysis of that as it comes out and uh yeah that's that's the name of the game at forex live just real time analysis of whatever's moving the market um and a little bit of fun we try to try to keep it light just like you dale so uh it's a uh, it's long days in the fx market if you can't have a little bit of fun yeah i wish i was your age anyway adam <laughs> great talking to you and uh, what a great job you you and greg and your whole team do over there and uh, you're really providing a great service for free to the trading community. I salute you on that and have a great Canada day, my friend and uh, uh, loony times to you and everyone else in the world. <laughs> it was great talking to you, Adam. My okay, trade. great. Yeah. It looks like cat is breaking down. So it's always a pleasure uh, to talk to your community and uh, thanks so much for having me. All right, Adam, everyone, Adam button, you could follow him at FX underscore button at Forex Live and go to his site and uh, stay informed with all the breaking news and great commentary by Forex Live by Adam Gregg and the rest of his team. Thank you, Adam, buddy. Take care, Greg. All right, bro. All right, that's a wrap for us, everyone. See everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Have a great day. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone tomorrow.